Welcome. My name is Sherry Mayberry, and I want to welcome you all tonight. Um, and thank you so much for taking time to join us for our webinar, No Money, No Problem. Um, we have on the webinar tonight people from just about everywhere. And we also know because of the questions you answered ahead of time that many of you are not GWIZ customers. So, um, I will ask you in the beginning, if you get a chance to download, there's three handouts over there that you can see in the top right hand corner of your screen. Uh, one is a um, PowerPoint of the, uh, or it's a PDF file of the PowerPoint Beth is gonna use tonight for training. The other is a flyer that will give you directions after we finish with the webinar tonight, how you may possibly order and get a discount. Um, and then also to let you know that next Tuesday night at seven o'clock, we're going to do another webinar, an introduction to GWIZ education, because we do have a lot of folks that are kind of finding out about us now since we are an online curriculum program for family child care uh, providers, and everything we deliver is online. Nothing is shipped, nothing's printed, um, which we think is a, just the way to go right now, especially in this day and time with where we are. But tonight we've got um, quite a few people, and Beth is well. Beth Smith will be the trainer, and I'm going to turn it over to her so we can get started because we really try to keep these no longer than an hour because we know that. All of you guys have had, probably had a really long day. Some of you may still have your, most of the people we're talking to still have their children in their homes. Very few people so far with the family child care have been closed during this uh, stay at home time. So anyway, Beth, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Good evening, everybody. I hope you're all well. That's the most important thing right now. Um, and we felt like this is a very timely topic, uh, not just now, but, across the board of how to use household materials for learning experiences, especially for those of you in a family child care situation. Um, in, and for those of you who do not know, GWIZ, like Sherry said, is a company dedicated to family child care. We create a curriculum that utilizes actually household materials instead of fancy expensive things, which we know that most family child care budgets don't have thousands of dollars to buy, for instance, a fancy water table. So. This is going to be a very interactive webinar, and we have a lot of people on tonight. So what we're going to do is we have two options. One, there's a question box in the toolbar that is part of this webinar where you can type in your thoughts, your ideas, your questions, because I'm going to be asking you for your thoughts and ideas. Um, the other option we have is you can raise your hand, and we can try to unmute you. Right now, everybody is muted. But in order to do that, you really need to be using a headset and or you need to dial in with your phone in order for us to hear you. We have found that if you're using the speakers and mic on your computer, most of the time it will not connect. Um, and so then if you're using your computer and a headset, we can normally hear you. So we can certainly try that. If you have an idea you wanna share and you wanna raise your hand, we can try to unmute you. If it doesn't work, obviously we just will not hear you. Um, so tonight what we're gonna do is talk a lot about how you can use things that you have around the house as teaching tools because there's so much you can do with so little. And we're gonna talk about how we can do different activities for different ages. We're gonna talk about the different developmental level or areas that we can address with these household materials. We're going to talk about safety. And so there's a lot we're going to cover. This PowerPoint will cover all of those things. And like I said, you are going to be asked to participate. We're going to try to keep an eye on the time um, because we do know time is precious, especially like Sherry said, after a long day. All right, so here's a few things we're gonna talk about tonight. Um, household materials as learning materials. And I just mentioned that. How one material, say a whisk, can address many developmental areas and you can plan many different activities and experiences with that one material. 
how you can adapt the experiences that you plan for different developmental levels, which we know is really important when you're a family child care provider. We know that you have children, a lot of you from infants to school age, especially right now with schools closed, um, it can be very challenging. So we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about safety, like I mentioned, and we're also gonna talk about using social media for not just inspiring you, but also to inspire you to share your ideas with others, because just like children learn from each other, we learn from each other as well. So all of those things we're gonna talk about this evening. And I don't know why it's not progressing the way I want it to, but so be it. All right, so learning happens everywhere and this is a really important concept to consider when you plan your day we know that everybody has a daily schedule you might have a group time you might have center times you have outside time you have nap time you have meal times learning occurs during all of those times so it's important to in your mindset remember that maybe when you're having a meal you could be using a household material like a spoon as a teaching tool. Or maybe when it's time for nap, you could be using that blanket or that pillow as a teaching tool. So part of what we're gonna do during this webinar is we're gonna explore all of those things and talk about how it's not just when you're planning experiences that are part of your curriculum or your daily lesson plan, but it's really part of every day, everything that you do. And I do know we have some parents and grandparents on this webinar tonight as well, and that's super important for you too, because every day there's so many things that can be teaching experiences for your children, but not in what you're thinking of as a formal sense, and yet they're very powerful. So here's your challenge right now. Most of us have seen these beautiful, colorful cups that you can purchase at the grocery store. And we're gonna talk about these cups. Um, a lot of times they're a 16 or a 20 ounce cup. And I have areas over here that will look familiar to a lot of you. So literacy books. So your area where you might have your books, you might have a writing center set up, science, math, art, manipulative, which includes things like sand and water play, dramatic play, box, gross motor, um, which would be, remember, that's your big muscles, the muscles in your arms, your legs, um, that with things like running and jumping, and then health. So your challenge right now is you're gonna pick two of those areas and think about how you could use these plastic cups in that area. So I'll get you started, for instance, I'm gonna talk about math. So for math, if I had these four plastic cups and I had some ping pong balls, right? Um, I could put the cups on their side, laying down on the floor and use some blue painter's tape, which I love blue painter's tape, and tape them down so they don't move. And then the children could try to roll the ping pong balls into the cups. Once they roll the balls, we could count how many balls went into the cups and how many balls missed the cups. For more advanced children, we could then write that down as an addition fact or a subtraction fact. So let's say we started with five balls and two balls went in the cups and three balls missed. Well, we could do two plus three is five, or we could do five and then um, two went in the cups, so five minus two equals three left. So that's an idea for math. What I would like you to do, and because we have such a large group, we can't possibly read all your suggestions, even though we know that you are so creative and we would love to, but what I would like you to do is pick two of those areas and just for one of them, write in the question box what you could do with these plastic cups. And then I'm gonna, Sherry's gonna unmute herself and she's gonna read off maybe four or five of the ideas that we ha that you have shared. Um, so try to pick different areas. I mean, be pick the area that's the most challenging for you. So if, if gross motor's challenging, pick that area. If uh, planning um, art activities is easy, then go for science. Push yourself a little bit and think outside the box of how you could use these plastic cups. And then um, Sherry's gonna read off, like I said, about four or five of them, because we have a lot of opportunities for you to share your ideas. So um, go ahead, type them in the, in the question box um, and, Sherry, you can unmute yourself and we'll see what everybody comes up with. Okay, just as um, some people are already emailing in some suggestions, which are great, but I got a couple of people and 
saying they're not getting sound, so I don't know if they can hear me, but you do have to pick your audio at the top right-hand corner um, in order to get the sound. All right, so here we go. Science, um, plant flowers um, or use it in blocks for stacking cups. Math, sorting items, colors, it, colors into the cups. For blocks, just stack them. Um, blocks. I'm trying to get something new. My kids will stack these for hours. <laughs> okay. Um, math, uh, find things to go into the cups that they see if they can find something that maybe you can get more things in in some cups. In other words, I, they're probably talking about the size of the items that you're choosing to go in that cup. Take nature walks and collect items as they look through them. Um, use, the, use the cups with food coloring to dye carnations or roses for Mother's Day. Great mm -hmm. um, Again, stacking the cup. Let's see if I can get down here or something. Um, build towers and bridges with the cups. Uh, you can put water in them and see how much water is in the cup. Difference. Um, and then plant seeds and m measure growth. Great. Anybody have a health idea with the cups? Uh, let's see. Sometimes, let's see, we got manipulative. Eye hand coordination, pouring and emptying out, counting how many cups it will take to fill. Uh, gross motor, um, have water in the cups and have to run, walk with water in the cups and have to pour it into a container and partner to have to fill and return path back. That sounds fun. <laughs> and difficult. <laughs> okay. One of the things that you could do for health would be to um, have every child create a special cup that they're going to use at home when they brush their teeth to rinse their mouth out. So they could, um, if they're old enough and, and, and they're working on writing their name, you could work with them one-on-one -on -one to use a, you'd have to be one-on-one because, -on -one you know, Sharpies are dangerous <laughs> and little hands. But if you worked one-on-one, -on -one, they could write their name on the cup and they could decorate it maybe with stickers or something and then take it home to use as a cup in their bathroom to rinse their mouth. You could also talk about, particularly timely right now, um, washing the cups. Like normally with plastic cups, they're meant to be disposable, but they can be reused. And so they could wash them in the manipulative area, but you could talk about how you wash your, you know, how you wash your, the cups that they use when they're eating, maybe by hand or maybe in the dishwasher and how these would be cups that necessarily couldn't go in the dishwasher. They would have to be washed by hand. So that'd be a way to incorporate some health. Great. Okay. We're going to do more of this. So don't feel bad if we didn't get to your suggestion. Um, so the big thing here to think about is that you can use one material in many different ways. So one of the ways that you could use those plastic cups is to talk about how many cups that container, for instance, that little guy right there has in that bucket, how many cups that we just saw on the other slide it would take to fill that one container. So they could estimate how many they think it's going to take, and then they could actually fill it and see if it how accurate their estimations were. That'd be a lot of math, right? Because they're gonna fill the cups, they're gonna count the cups, how many cups it takes to fill the bucket. They're gonna be doing some estimating. They're gonna be, they could even be using measurement if you talk about how many ounces with much more advanced children. Um, science, just the idea of filling something with a liquid and then you could fill it again with something like sand. Does it take the same number of cups when you fill it with sand as it did when you filled it with water? Um, filled it with leaves, how many cups of leaves does it take to fill that bucket? Approaches to learning, which is persistence and patience and trying new things. Obviously all of that would be part of this experience. Logic and reasoning, problem solving. So how are we gonna prevent the water or the sand or the leaves from spilling from when we fill the cup to when we put it into the bucket? 
physical development and health, obviously the fine motor control of actually filling it up and dumping it in. If they have to carry it, like somebody said in that one game where they were going to carry the water, if they had to carry the water, carry the leaves, carry the sand, how are they going to prevent it from spilling? But also the fine motor control that's required to fill the cup itself and then carry it. And then social emotional development, right? It might not go well. You might spill the water, you might spill the hand. So self-regulation, how are you going to handle those emotions when things don't go exactly right? Working together to do this, you know, or everybody has their own cup. We're going to do it together. We're going to work together as a team. So the point here is that you have one simple material, those plastic cups, and in this case, a bucket, and you can use it for an experience that addresses all these different developmental areas. And if you really thought about, there might be some more. So the thing about this is that you have to think about not just what you're going to do, but why you're doing it because the why behind it is very important. So it's important that you think about, okay, we're gonna do this great activity, it's gonna be a lot of fun, but it's also gonna help them develop in these areas. And the, the emphasis for each of these areas may be slightly different for different children. Like you might have a child that's working really hard on fine motor coordination. So for them, the goal of this experience might be simply to be able to fill that cup up with water or sand and carry it to dump it, right? Um, or you might have some a, a child who's much more advanced or one of your school age children that they are able to do some very complicated math with multiplication about how many ounces take it takes to fill that bucket. So if you have a 16 ounce drink cup, it takes 10 cups to fill it. How many ounces is that all together? So you could take this one experience and you could take it in so many different different levels, which for a family child care provider, if you have multiple levels, and even if you're in a center and you're, let's say, a 3-4 teacher, you know that with that 3-4 age group, you're going to have multiple levels all over the place. So you can take one experience and adapt it, adapt it down for the children in your group. There are so many different materials that you have in your home that can be teaching tools. Here are just some of them. I would like to ask you to look over this list because I know you're all excellent readers and you do not need me to read it to you, but I would like you to look over this list and then suggest some other household materials that are not on this list that you could also use as teaching tools. Now, keeping in mind, and we're going to talk about this also at the end, is safety, obviously. Not a choking hazard, no sharp edges, nothing that could be dangerous if used by the children. So. Think of what you know you have around your house, and these are, again are just some ideas. And then in the question box, type in other ideas of things that you could use as household materials that would be safe for the children in your learning experiences. Hey Beth, um, I did want to let you know that someone was asking about the activities for infants, and because a lot of the things that we were talking about were like health and um, well. I'm sorry, we did have a suggestion on health and it's talking about how much water you drink a day, which I thought was a great That's idea. An excellent especially. one. <laughs> yes. Um, but with infants, I think too that just providing um, those I, the cups and letting them just play with them is probably just something infants would, you know, sit for yes. quite a while just playing with. And this key is here with infants and toddlers is you. All right, you're the missing link. So we know that infants are fascinated with cause and effect right? Give them a plastic cup. What are they going to do with it? Bang it on something. Bang it on the, the, if they're sitting in the high chair, they're going to bang it on the high chair. They're going to bang it on the floor. And then your role in all of that is to simply talk about, describe their actions. Oh, you hit that cup on the floor and it made a funny sound. What sound did it make? Can you make that sound again? And you talk to them. They're not going to respond to you because they're not verbal yet, but they're absorbing everything you say. And you also, if you describe what happens when they do something, and they connect the dots. Oh, I hit the cup on the ground and it made a sound. We all know that, but to an infant, they're just learning that. So like Sherry said, just giving them the plastic cups to explore. You could even make a cup sensory bin where you take a Rubbermaid tub and you put different types of plastic cups in there because they make even little tiny plastic bathroom cups, but they also have these big pla big plastic cups and things in between, different sizes, and just let them play. Um, 
And again, talk about the colors of the cups, talk about the sounds they make, talk about um, what the infant does. You know, you picked, oh, look, you picked up a blue cup. You know, again, you're just exposing them to lots of things doing that. And that's also very, very important, not just for toddlers who are also still working on language, but also your ELL and your DLL children, children who are learning another language in addition to their home language. So again, your role is super important with those children, um, just like it is with infants and toddlers. We have some great suggestions of other things that are not on the list. We've got egg cartons, uh, measuring spoon, measuring cups, cooking utensils, um, rocks, um, cereal and food boxes. Uh, let's see, toilet paper rolls, uh, large drink lids, post-it notes, um, bowls, pillows, paper towel tubes, let's see if there's more, to, or wrapping paper uh, tubes, mm -hmm. scales, scales, uh, laundry, bas laundry baskets, uh, ice cube trays, yarn, spray bottles, uh, make puzzles out of cereal boxes. Um, let's see, there's so many good. Uh, caps from squeezable applesauce for sorting colors that must be those squirt things um let's see i'm trying to find something that i haven't already mentioned oh muffin pans my mm -hmm. uh, my um have two grandchildren that by their with their other grandmother right now she sent the best picture of they had a muffin pan and in each slot was a different snack it's one way to introduce snack and counting uh let's see spaghetti strainers laundry detergent boxes clothes pans wicker mm. baskets beans streamers labeling items labeling items in the home Plastic ice trays, plastic cups. Uh, okay. Oatmeal Those containers, corks. Yeah. <laughs> it goes on and on and on. And I mean, and you guys, response. Exactly. You guys are all getting the idea that it's not just that you don't have to spend a lot of money on things that can be amazing teaching tools. So great job. That's awesome. Um, so in, here's an example, for instance, and we're going to talk about actually infants and toddlers right now. How could you use an old t-shirt? I don't know about you, but I have old t-shirts all over the house. It seems like no matter what, we end up with all these t-shirts that have holes and stains and anyway, they make great dust rags, <laughs> but uh, they also can be a great teaching tool. So for instance, for infants and toddlers, you can cut the t-shirts into small pieces and clip them in clothespins. Now I'm talking about the clothespins that have the pinchy, that have a spring, and then they can use them to paint with. And that's great because it's a, it's a bigger thing for them to hold on to. Um, if you wanted to, you can even take two of those types of clothespins and wrap them together again with my blue painter's tape that I just love to make it even bigger handle for them to hold on to. Um, you can also talk about what happens when they paint while they're using those painters made with the t-shirts. And then that encourages language development and social emotional development. Again, like we just talked about, it, with infants and toddlers and your ELL, DLL children, it is so important for you to verbalize their actions and what's happening because it's how they learn. Now with those t-shirts with your preschoolers, they could use the pieces of the t-shirt in different ways. So they could paint with them, they could use them to play some type of a game. Um, they could do approaches to learning where they're predicting, you know, what's going to happen when I dip the t-shirt into the paint? Is all the paint going to be absorbed into the t-shirt? Is some of the paint going to go on my paper? Do I have to rub it around more than I would a paintbrush? Um, they can problem solve and experiment while they're creating. You can, again, you're going to want to do a lot of language where you're getting them to talk about what's happening. So, for instance, let's say they dip the t-shirt painter, same kind of thing with the clothespin and the piece of t-shirt, into yellow paint. And then they took that same painter and they dipped it in red paint. You can encourage them to predict, well, what's, what do you think you're going to see when you have two colors of paint on your painter and you put it on the paper? Um, 
and again, encouraging them to share what they like about painting with those t-shirt painters and what they don't like about them and how is it different to paint with a t-shirt painter versus a regular paintbrush. The key being here that this is just one way that you could use an old t-shirt, but there are so many other ways you could use old t-shirts in your program as well. And so when you're planning experiences for children, again, the key is not just to plan the experience, but like here where you see in red the different areas of development that that activity is going to address. And your goal should be to try to address as many of those different developmental areas as you can. That will make your experiences much more powerful for the children as they explore different areas for growth and development. All right, so now we're gonna put you back on again. So everybody seems to have lots of plastic water bottles. And the key here is with these plastic water bottles, those caps can be dangerous in little hands. So under the age of three, the rule is if it fits through a toilet tissue roll, it is too small. I will expand that rule to children over the age of three, like my son who seemed to put everything in his mouth. And I'm sure you've had those children too. They might be four, but they like to put things in their mouth and chew on them. So Anybody who puts things in their mouth, the caps are not an okay idea. So if you're going to make something or use these for something with children and you want to use the caps, for instance, maybe you want to make some type of a shaker and put things inside, use glue and then wrap the cap on there with duct tape and wrap it on really well because as we know little fingers seem to have a way of getting things off and then also supervise. So with all that said, what I would like you to do is think about the plastic drink bottles, think about an activity you could plan with them, what age it would be for, and most importantly, what developmental area you would address, okay? So when you type in your idea, say, for instance, I'm gonna use the shaker, I'm gonna make a shaker and I'm gonna put um, rice inside and some dried macaroni noodles, and I'm gonna put in some, Oh, I'll heck, I'll put in some sequins too to make it sparkly. And it's going to be for my infants and my toddlers because I'm going to wrap that top with tape and they're not going to get it off. And the developmental areas would be fine motor skills because they're going to hold on to it and they're going to shake it. Science, cause and effect. I shake it. It makes sounds. I could even incorporate some types of math in terms of color recognition as I talk about the different colors in there. So we know that in the type in box you don't have a ton of time to type so just pick something that you can just describe very briefly for us if there is anybody that would like us to try to unmute them we can certainly do that if you raise your hand but again you would need to be on a headset or on your phone so with that said let's see what you can come up with and I challenge you for particularly areas of hmm let's see health and physical uh, development and also science and let's do literacy and in this case when I'm talking about literacy knowledge I'm talking about the knowledge uh, book knowledge how to handle books I'm talking about letters I'm talking about letter recognition um, for those children who are ready and think about your school agers because we know you have some of those too um, letter sound recognition and maybe even words and see what you can come up with Okay, we're already getting a lot of responses. Um, the one, um, I think you mentioned it too, Beth, sensory bottles, but make sure we glue the tops on and tape the tops down. This was something I'd never thought about, make a mini raft for the water table, which I'm assuming you have the air, you tape the top, then you tape them together and it makes a little raft. Um, okay. Uh, fill with pom-poms rice, hole and cap. With hole, push several ribbons through the glue on cap and make a shaker with ribbon. Oh, oh! So the ribbon sticking out of the ca of the cap like a shaker. That's cool. Very cool. Okay, the bottom is pressed into paints. Makes a great flower uh, stamp, and it would be for three years and up. Um, put beans in the bottom of them to weight them down slightly. It, to make them into bowling pins. Use a tennis ball or a small rubber ball as the bowling ball. Toddlers or preschools, gross motor, fine motor, eye-hand coordination, uh, and tops should be glued again. I think we got that. So oh yeah, glue sure those that. tops. 
uh, rolling the bottles filled with different items such as cotton, uh, corn, leaves, rocks, water, and just comparing how that um, how that would how they roll differently with the different items. That'd be a great science experiment. Experiment. Okay, we put sand inside and glue the tops on, and make bowling pins. Okay, pre-cut and use as use as poster garden preschool and up. Oh, I spy for a three three or four year old a thematic base. Um, I'm looking for something with literacy. I've got lots of science, science, fine motor, math, literacy. Make your own book by drawing pictures and are writing about the daily growth um, if you, you're planting flowers or planting seeds in them. Ah. Dispose of lids and put the soil, beans, and more soil, water tightly, beans will grow will grow vines up and out of the bottle. Cool. So, and doing the literacy with your books. And that would be a great, like keeping a scientific journal basically is what you're doing. So every day you would write down what you observe or what you see. They could even take photos that they could, um, you know, print out just on regular paper to put in their journal or they could draw pictures. That's an excellent idea. Um, cut the literacy, cut the ends and have them look through it like a telescope to read books in a new way. Oh, that would be very interesting. I'm going to put water, oil, blue, and yellow food coloring with the preschooler, shake it, and it turns green. Magnetic letters in sand. Use magnets to locate the letters, the letter of their name. Oh, hide items from a book or story and sensory bottle. Oh, that would be kind of fun. So you could look for the items from the book inside the bottle. Um, Safari animals colored rice. Let's see. Write their names of different words all over the bottles. That would be a lot of fun. You could wrap them in paper. And it might be easier if you did that just to have them write the words on the paper first and then wrap the bottle. Because I don't know about you, but I have a really hard time writing on a curved surface. <laughs> <laughs> uh, put letters on each bottle and roll the ball. Child will have to name the letters that they that they know. And that definitely is literacy for the older four or fives that are ready. Yep. Um, alphabet beads and rice for each letter search. Let's see. Those are all great ideas. Okay. One person just asked where do they type in their ideas? Where you just type that question. That's where you type in your ideas. <laughs> that's where we're reading them from. That's where, it's just a small little square for me to read. So that's the reason it takes just a minute for um, me to see it. And having different items so that you get, di get different sounds. Um, we got a couple of things that are coming up again. Color Monster book of the bottles represent each feeling. Oh, that's ah, interesting. Great idea. Write a web by asking the child, what can we do with the plastic bottles? There you go. Write a list of things we can put in the bottles. And this also ties in really well with the environment and repurposing things and re it, actually this whole webinar is, is very important about that because what you're doing is you're taking something and reusing it for a different purpose um, instead of it ending up you know in a landfill or worse yet the trash I mean or, or in the, hopefully recycling with plastic but not everybody recycles so this is a great way for them to see that they can reuse things in new ways yeah I think all of those are perfect great things one science you can do with your older children, um, and this would be school agers, and partly because I played the flute, is if you put water of different levels in these bottles and then you blow across the top in just the right way, you can make different tones and different sounds and they can experiment. But again, that's going to be with your school age children. I'm trying to give you some ideas for them because I know a lot of you have them right now with the way things are. Um, so that would be something you could do for science. And then these bottles don't necessarily have a label on them, but all 
water bottles that you purchase do. And so that's an excellent way also to talk about letters and words. What does that bottle say? Um, why does it say that? Where, was the, where did the water come from? How many ounces are in the bottle? So again, with the children who are more advanced, you could do that. Infants and toddlers, because I know a lot of you have infants and toddlers. Again, assuming that the lids are on, they would have a ball just knocking these over and making sounds with them. So just giving them a plastic water bottle to play with, um, and you could put something inside or not put it something inside, different sizes, and again, you can talk about it. So that's the key there with them is they're just, they love to explore, but the key is you. So great job. Okay, we're gonna do some more. Now we have paper um, gift bags, which I seem to accumulate over the years. Um, so you don't necessarily need to think about just these here because you can think about other types of gift bags you have. But again, what activity could you plan? What age group would it be for? What developmental areas could you address? Um, these are something also that you can ask parents and guardians to send in because if they're like me again, I seem to have these on hand um, in my gift bag box. <laughs> okay, we got make puppets. Um... Pretend to go shopping. Let's see. I think uh, the making puppets is the same person and that would be for all age groups. Make a list of items the house needs and I guess and then go shopping for them with the mm -hmm. um, uh, sorting of like the different colors. Mm -hmm. Again, dramatic play in the shopping, grocery store shopping. Uh, infants put silk type scarves inside with just a little sticking out for the infants to pull them out. Eye hand coordination and fine motor. They love they to love put that. things in and take things out. Oh yeah. Fill with scarves and have the children pull them out. Again, that's great for the infants. Uh, make a nice Mother's Day present and put the kids picture on Okay, we're back to bottles. I'm sorry. <laughs> that one <wouldn't begin> came <laughs> Mystery bags for sensory game. I'm assuming you're talking about putting something in the bag mm -hmm. and then the children reach in and touch it and try to guess what it is. That's a lot of fun. They love to play that game. Okay, uh, matching objects to color of bag. Mm hmm. Yeah, that mystery bag, they just explained themselves, and that's exactly what they're um, saying. Just practice and fold in them. Uh, math, using your bags to find four items or go find three red items and keep going, or one yellow item, um, and that can be adapted for just about any age. Mm -hmm. Okay, post office, have letters in bags. Play post office, and I guess put the letters in the bag. Um, guess what I have as you describe the item in the bag and let them try to guess as you describe. Okay, sensory, social, emotional literacy. Preschools put different items in each bag and have children pick one bag, feel what's inside and guess what it is, and then write or dictate a story about the item. That's fun. Mm. Hide an item and try to find which bag is it in. Ah. Again, guessing. Oh, let's see, sensory bag. So I'm assuming we're putting different things, make different noise again. Um, bounce balls and try to get them in the bag. Always that would be that. fun. Right. Good, gross motor. We need some gross motor. Right. Yeah. Uh, place place sensory items and describe them. Have the children guess. Cut out items. Cut out items from magazine and place in the bags, birthday bags. Do we do we put chicken picture in there? What picture did we put in there? Ah, okay. Yes. All right. That would be great for building language skills with your younger children. You know, I have a picture or even a plush animal. I have a chicken or I have a stuffed frog and the frog goes in the bag, the frog comes out of the bag. So you're, re you're re reinforcing positional concepts too. And someone just suggested positional words like I have the bag, put the bag in front of you, put the bag behind you. And that could be a gross motor game too, almost like Simon says. 
I have another gross motor activity um, for outside is you give every children, every child, and these would be smaller sized ones, obviously, they wouldn't want big ones, blow bubbles and then challenge them to try to catch the bubble in the bag. Um, what size of items can I put in this bag? You can have different size bags and then you have to decide what can it hold or if you've got something, things you got to pack, which bag is going to be best for those? That's an excellent problem solving experience because it requires spatial awareness. Like let's say you have a really big teddy bear and you know, is that big teddy bear going to fit in that little bag or is it going to fit in the big bag better? And let them try it out and see what works and what doesn't. That's how they learn. Okay, so uh, send book home in a bag and draw a picture of the story on the bag. Oh, that's fun. Uh, book bags uh, <laughs> or yeah. bags of books. <laughs> fun. Um, Simon says with the bag. I guess Simon says put the bag in front or put things in the bag. Mm -hmm. uh, literacy make. Let's see. There was an old lady who swallowed a fly and cut the bag so that they can act out the story. Oh, fun. Nice. Those are all great ideas. You, you're really starting, I can tell, to get the idea that a simple thing like a shopping bag can be used in so many different ways. All right, we're going to go on to the next one. A whisk. Now, these come in many different sizes and many different types. This happens to be a wire whisk. I have one that has Teflon on it. Um, so again, what activity would you plan with whisks? What age group would it be for? And what developmental areas would you address? I'll uh, get you started. Go oh. ahead, Sherry. Well, someone just suggested as a musical instrument. That would be for about any age group. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. One of the things that I used to do with my preschoolers with whisks, and uh, actually the thrift store is a great place to find whisks um, for when they next open to nothing. Back up. <laughs> when they open back up, is uh, cut lengths of ribbon that's about an inch wide, and then maybe each strip is about a foot long, and they can weave it in and out, in and out of the wire on the whisk. Um, that's a lot of fun and it requires an, a large amount of fine motor skills. So obviously for your older children, um, but it's a lot of fun to practice weaving with a whisk. So um, paint with whisk, uh, that would be for all age group and mm -hmm. it is fine motor. Uh, yep. Soap and water to make bubbles and see if they can make bu bubbles yep. if they have the soap and water in there. Um, bubble play. Um, have them pick up pom-poms, high hand, I can't talk, eye hand <laughs> coordination, <laughs> hit different surfaces with and make different sounds with the whisk. Um, mm -hmm. Use it during your cooking activity. Uh, let's see, again, bubbles. Um, mixing colors, Mi mixing colors for preschoolers, which would be science and art. Mm -hmm. Water play with soap, ribbons on end, and again, uh, music and dancing. P puff balls for them to put in and take out, I guess, of the whisk. I mean, yeah. it would be, that would be definitely fine motor. Absolutely. And you could do different size of those balls because the pom-poms come in like great big giant pom-poms and little pom-poms, depending on the children's ages, obviously, and choking hazards. But yeah, that would be fun to push them in and out of there. Using sand and water play. Sand would be a lot of fun with the whisk. Mm -hmm. It'd make um, a lot of cool sounds too yeah. when you're whisking sand. Yeah. Science for preschool. How can you make the water in the tornado or, or in the waves? Uh, water in the bucket and just using the whisk. I mean, that's just really exciting because they don't get that chance to do that. So this is like, oh, it's all okay and I'm having a great time. Mm -hmm. um, Place ribbons on the whisk and dance with them. That'd be even for toddlers. Um, hang plastic tablecloths or a cloth, one that di the, then dip in paint and splatter. So just Ooh. kind of cling onto the plastic cloth. That would cool. be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Messy, but fun. <laughs> That's definitely outdoors. <laughs> yep. Uh, use two as hand by motor. Let's see music area, use them as drumsticks, 
and what sound does it make? Let's see. Yeah, because it was going to make a lot of different sounds. I mean, obviously, you want to make sure that whatever you're going to let them bang on with the whisk is safe, like a cardboard box, but even different sizes of cardboard boxes or a Rubbermaid box is going to make totally different sounds. And then they, you could even go outside and you could tap on, say, a wooden deck or you could tap on a wooden fence. And there's so many different sounds you could make with that whisk. Uh, blow bubbles, use it as a play play-doh tool Ooh, and that would be fun and juggling um one person has asked that they, there's just a lot of good ideas that i can't even cover them all but what we will try to do after this is over with and maybe sometime tomorrow uh try to um download some of these responses in in an email just do a blanket email to everybody get the question and then give kind of the answers that we're getting if we block and copy you might see some typos but i don't think anybody cares <laughs> about yeah, that. yeah or i could probably create a pdf and we could post it sherry on the training yeah. webinar handout page and i'm, I'm going to be taking you all there eventually anyway to show you where you go to get the post assessment so great we're going to move oh, on yeah. all right one more blankets Lots of people have blankets, all different kinds of blankets. You can include quilts in here if you would like. You can talk, you just figure uh, throw blankets, um, bed sized blankets, whatever you want to use. See if you can come up with some infant things. Blankets are great for infants. Build tents. They love, love. to have <laughs> their new house. Yes. It's sports, parachute play. And of course, hide and seek. Um, picnic, have the picnic on it. Bounce balls in the uh, blankets. Magic carpet ride. Hide and seek with infants. Um, build a tent for toddlers, which would be gross motor, building forts, peekaboo. Uh, make a house or fort, different textures. Okay. Uh, infants to crawl over them. To crawl over the blankets like a mountain of blankets mm -hmm. the minute fun. you stack a real high stack if i have pillows and the floor stacked up that's where they had and just want to dive in <laughs> and same thing with blankets if you have them all stacked up it's kind of like when you rake leaves mm -hmm. <laughs> they want to jump in the leaves let's see Trying to get some different ones. Uh, just sensory, talking about the textures of the blanket, different textures. Make capes, parachutes. Hang up and toss balls over the blanket. So I guess hang up like on a um, clothesline. Some of you are probably oh, yeah, raking up. A, 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 a beach yeah, ball over is. and back. Yes, <laughs> right. That would be sure. fun. Uh, rolling a blanket up and making different shapes out of it. Ooh. Fun. Fold small blankets, fan small blankets over infants to feel gentle breeze. And again, talk about what you're doing and why you're doing it and what's happening and what they feel and what they hear, and what they sat, what they what they see. That's so important. What's missing? Hide something and go figure out what the object was but under the blanket. Mm, that's a good guessing game. That really gets them to think. And what uh, you can do there is you can have your school-age children give the clues, um, and they can give the clues about what's under the blanket and see if the younger ones can guess. Sort by colors. For infants, just stack and just let them go. They will design their own play. <laughs> oh, yes, that is true. <laughs> um, use them as capes. As she was a hairdresser in dramatic play, and so she, the blanket was the cape so they could get their ah. hair cut. <laughs> but those are all good, great yes. answers. The point is that there's so many things you can do with just these few simple things that we've talked about. And um, I think if we sat here for another hour, you would come up with even more things that you could do. The point being that there can be so much learning that takes place with simple things that you have around the house that, you know, too often we think that we need to have a lot of money to buy very expensive, fancy learning 
I'm going to say learning tools, but we really, we really don't need to do that. Um, and this is a good exp example of, of exactly that, right? We've given you some very simple things, a whisk, plastic water bottles and blankets. And you've come up with a ton of ideas of things you could do for all different ages and addressing all different developmental areas. So you guys did a great job. But we also have to think about safety, right? Like I mentioned earlier, an easy way to evaluate if something is a choking hazard is simply, does it fit inside a toilet tissue or a paper towel roll? If it does, it's too small for children under the age of three and also those ones that wanna put things in their mouth. So just like the lids on the water bottles, you need to secure them or just not use them. Um, sharp edges, even things like um, chenille stems, pipe cleaners can have sharp edges. Plastic lids, believe it or not, sometimes can have sharp edges. So just be careful when you're giving things to children, particularly your little guys to explore. Make sure that, you know, whatever it is, um, is not sharp or dangerous in any way. And that's just common sense, right? I mean, you are all very attuned to that, um, but sometimes things that we don't think could be dangerous actually could be, because it seems like children just come up with ways to use things that they're not meant to be used. So, seek and share. Um, one of the most wonderful things about the internet is that it is a perfect uh, medium for people to share ideas. And just like you all have come up with wonderful ideas tonight, which um, like I told Sherry, I don't see why when I get the report, I can't kind of condense some of this into a, a PDF handout that I can then post on our website that you can download. But Facebook is a great place to go for ideas. I see things all the time on Facebook that I think are just really cool ideas. And and I manage our Facebook page for GWiz, so I then share those on our page. So if you haven't gone to our Facebook page, which is just, if you go to Facebook and do GWiz Education, you will find us. Um, you can see the kinds of things that I post on there that I share. Pinterest is also very popular, and there's so many different ideas of really cool things that people do, and then they post on Pinterest. And YouTube. Um, whenever I need to know how to do anything anymore, I go to YouTube. So um, I think that that it's a, also a really great resource um, when you're looking for ideas uh, of places that you can go to look at different YouTube channels and see what they have posted. So the other part of that is if you have your own Facebook page um, for your business, share some of the things you do. Um, some of the ideas that you come up with because when you share other people learn from you and you learn from them and this just goes round and round and round so use social media in a way that's positive I mean too often in today's world people use it for a negative in a negative way but this is one way you can really use it to to enhance your program and then maybe help somebody else enhance theirs um, I'm going to pause here right now for questions regarding this uh, webinar and the, the material that we have presented, uh, because what I will do then is I'm going to close out this PowerPoint presentation, and I want to go and show you where you'll go on our website to get to the post assessment, which then if you complete the post assessment and you click submit, once you click submit, you're going to see a pop-up that has a hyperlink where you can then click on that and it will take you to the certificate that you can print out, um, a certificate of attendance that just says that you've attended this webinar. Um, but first, I want to see, are there any questions that I can answer regarding you know, how you can use household materials as learning materials and how you can use them to address many different developmental areas? Um, one thing, as you're thinking about that, or if you want to get the questions out, wanted to share with you that in the flyers, hopefully you had a chance to download those three flyers. Uh, one of the flyers actually has a discount code since you came to the webinar tonight. If you're not already a customer, um, there's a code on that page. It's web, WB, 2020. So, and I'm going to send that to everybody now so you see it in your chat box. Uh, and it gives you $10 off your first order if you're not a customer. Also, that other flyer, uh, just so you know, has got the information for the webinar for next week. Um, 
and again, the certificate after you finish, the that's going to show you where you can access the post-assessment. And after you do that, you will get the certificate. I think you're going to show us that in a minute, yep, right? Beth? I am, as soon as I close out the PowerPoint. Yep. Okay. I don't see any other questions except for about the um, certificate. Okay. I'm and, going to exit out of here. Give me one second. So... I'm going to open a new tab because I don't want to lose you all. Our website is gwizeducation.com. And this is just the easiest way for us to get the, uh, the link to the assessment to you or the post assessment. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to go to our website and you're going to go over here under the support tab. Okay. Then I'm going to come over here to webinar training video. Click there. And by the way, we have numerous webinars that are recorded that we've done in the past that I'm not logged in right now as a customer or anything. These are available to anyone. So if you're not familiar with GWiz, you don't know what we do, or you've never been on our website, all of these webinars that are recorded are on our YouTube channel, but they're also right here on this page. So I'm going to scroll down. Here's the webinar we just did. And here in this purple box, if you click on that, not right now, don't do it right now because I don't have it turned on. When we finish the webinar, give me just a few minutes. I have to go out there and actually turn it on so it will accept responses. But I'm going to turn it on. And when you click this button, it'll take you there. You answer the questions. They're very simple. Don't panic. Click Submit. And then when you click Submit, a message is going to pop up that says, thank you for attending our webinar. Here is a link for you to print your, your certificate. You might need to copy that link and put it in your browser to take you there, but it, it, regardless, that's the link you need to get to the certificate that then you can print out. Once we've ended the webinar, you no longer will have the PDF of the PowerPoint, but if you want that, it's right here under handout number one. OK, so this is where you go to get your to complete the post assessment and print the certificate. And this is where you go to get the PDF of the handout of the PowerPoint that I just did. Um, if you're a quality specialist or trainer, because I know we have some of those on the webinar tonight, I would be more than happy to share the PowerPoint itself with you. And there's a question that's going to pop up in a short survey at the very end of the webinar. If you just share the information I'm asking for there, I'll reach out to you directly and get that to you because I'm happy to share. But if you scroll down, you will see some of the other webinars we've done. This was one on open-ended questioning. This was one on an introduction to GWiz, which we're doing a new one of those um, next week. Here's one on making math meaningful. So again, there's a slew of them here. And again, they're open to anyone who would like to watch them. Um, I'm going to go back to our homepage for just a second. Because I know there are a lot of you maybe who are not familiar with who we are or what we do at all. Um, under the Our Product tab, we have a catalog that's digital. GWiz is very cutting edge in that we don't print a bunch of marketing materials. Um, the curriculum itself is not something that's printed and shipped to you in a box, and that's intentional by design. It's enabled us to keep the price extremely low as opposed to something that's printed and then shipped. Um, so our catalog explains all of that, and then our user's guide is like our training manual. There's information on the in there about individualization, anecdotal notes, um, cultural awareness, developmental areas. There's just a ton of things. So again, everything that you see right here, everything from under the FCC tools tab, where we have our seasonal and holiday things, we're going to get ready to post um, some Mother's Day things here this week, is all open to everybody. I am not a customer. I am not signed in. So um, there's a lot of free things here for everyone. If you scroll down, then you can see if you're interested in are we aligned with your state standards. We are. Um, here's our pricing information. Here's a state map where you can click on your state to see if we're approved or and or if we are um, aligned with your state standards, which we are aligned with all state and national standards. So anyway, there's a lot of information on our website. So again, I'm going to go over this one more time because I know everybody wants to know how to get their certificate. So I went to gwizeducation.com. I came over here to support. 
I go to webinar training video and I click. And then I simply scroll down until I see the purple box, but don't click it yet. You got to give me a few minutes to turn it on. Um, so with that all said, there's a very short like two, three question survey at the end. Um, we would love your feedback. And then, like I said, if you want the po want to do the post assessment to get your certificate, it'll be ready in just a few minutes. Um, any final questions that I can answer for anyone regarding this webinar on using household materials as teaching materials? Um, there is one question. Someone wants you to repeat the information about the specialist at quality specialist and trainers. Sure. So is... if you are a quality specialist or a trainer and you would like the actual PowerPoint presentation, so you can do this training with your providers, I am more than happy to share that with you. There will be a question at the end that comes up as part of the survey where you can just give me your name and contact information so that I can email it to you. There is also under the YG Wiz tab, a special tab for quality specialists. We have specific materials for you under that tab. Um, so if you are a quality specialist, you're not familiar with GWiz, that's a great place to start. Um, you can always reach out to me directly my email and this goes for anybody that's on the webinar if you have questions is b as in boy smith at gwizeducation.com and i'm more than happy to answer any questions um, that you might have and the link for the webinar for next week will be posted on that page where this recording will be uh, it'll just be right above it starting tomorrow sometime. Also, we'll be sending out um, MailChimps tonight with the link for the webinar for next week. And which please is a share very, that. Yeah, which is a very good point, Sherry, and I didn't even think about that. I'm going to scroll down our homepage just very quickly here. If you are not signed up to get our newsletter, which is where we announce these webinars and we announce we've posted Mother's Day activities and all that kind of thing, here's where you sign up. All you have to do is put your email in here. So just go to our homepage, scroll down, and then sign up for our newsletter. That will ensure that you get notified when we're going to do our next webinar, when we posted free materials, if we're having a sale, whatever, it'll be right there. So um, if you have not signed up as part of our newsletter, like you're not a current customer, um, you've never ordered from us, that's a great place to sign up. But that way you get notified. Okay, we did pretty well keeping it within an hour. That was our, that's typically our goal. Um, so if there are no more questions, you can always send questions after the webinar is over to customer service or at gwizeducation.com or bsmith at gwizeducation.com or smayberry at gwizeducation.com. Um, you, again, like Beth said, you will be getting a two question survey as soon as, well, it'll be in the first email that thanks you for coming. Uh, and then you know where to go to fill out the post assessment to get your certificate. And I think we've covered about the webinar next week. So um, again, thank you everyone for coming. We had people from a little bit of everywhere. So it's been a great night and uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Yeah, just give me like two minutes to go out there and activate that. Um... The post assessment and if you have any problems with that the other way to reach us is customer service at gwizeducation.com and and we're happy to help you that way too but thanks again for attending like sherry said stay safe stay well and um, we hope you join our next webinar bye bye